Hi, I'm Natalie Fay, resident tweeter at Parks Canada. Today I'm at Parks Canada's Underwater Archaeology Headquarters, which will serve as mission control as our underwater archaeologists once again head up north, high above the Arctic Circle, to search for the lost Franklin ships. I'm joined now by Ryan Harris, senior underwater archaeologist at Parks Canada, who will be leading the search. We'll be uh, working out of Cambridge Bay uh, beginning August 10th and going all the way to September 19th, and that actually amounts to a full five and a half uh, or even six weeks of, uh, of field work, our longest uh, field season to, to date. HMS Erebus and HMS Terror are of central importance uh, in the history of uh, polar navigation and Arctic exploration. Uh, they also speak to a very early period of interaction between uh, the Inuit and, and Europeans. Uh, they're obviously inextricably linked to the search for the Northwest Passage, and for, for these reasons, uh, they were designated as a National Historic Site. Can you tell us whereabouts in the Arctic you guys are going to be searching this year? Uh, yes, essentially we have uh, two distinct survey areas in the north and in the south, and those relate to the actual uh, two ships and uh, where we believe uh, they've come to lie. Uh, so the northern search area is in the Victoria Strait, where it funnels into the Alexander Strait, uh, all west of King William Island, and then the southern area is uh, close to the Adelaide Peninsula in the, the Queen Maud Gulf. We also uh, continue to enjoy the support of the Arctic Research Foundation. Uh, once again, we'll be working uh, side by side with the Governor Nunavut. They'll be conducting land-based archaeology on the shores of Erebus Bay where uh, there are sites that relate to the uh, the desperate final march of the, the crews as they retreated from the two ships. So uh, we also continue to work closely with the Inuit communities uh, of the north. Uh, this helps us to uh, uh, better understand uh, and interpret the uh, the Inuit testimony from from the 19th century that uh, points uh, to uh, where we're going to look for these two ships. Uh, and then beyond that, we continue to work with a number of uh, federal government partners from uh, the Canadian Coast Guard, uh, the Canadian Hydrographic Service, uh, the Canadian Space Agency, the Canadian Ice Service, uh, val valued partners to, uh, to make this all happen. What's going to be new for 2013, however, is that uh, we're actually bringing on board the Royal Canadian Navy, uh, and we'll be working with uh, Defence Research Development Canada, or DRDC, and we'll be taking advantage of their expertise uh, to help uh, implement some of the new, new technologies we're deploying this year. Can you tell me a little bit about the technology you'll be using this year? Uh, yes, so in addition to the uh, side scan sonar systems that we've deployed uh, in years past, uh, we have a number of uh, exciting new uh, technologies we plan on using this year, including uh, a state-of-the-art autonomous underwater vehicle, essentially a, a self-propelled, self-guided uh, undersea robot that will uh, scan the seafloor in search of the, uh, the ships. Uh, we'll also have a new remotely operated vehicle uh, with uh, high-definition television cameras on board uh, in the event that we find a a significant target will be able to return uh, very interesting images of that. For the most part, we'll be working from the research vessel Martin Bergman, which has been provided to us by the Arctic Research Foundation, one of our, uh, our project partners. Uh, but we'll also have a full seven days on the Coast Guard ship, the Sir Wilfrid Laurier. Other than the archaeology work that you'll be doing up there, what are some of the other benefits coming out of this? Uh, well, working with the Canadian Hydrographic Service uh, uh, for four field seasons, we've uh, amassed quite a bit of uh, information on uh, the depths uh, of the seafloor uh, throughout the survey area, uh, much of which uh, has remained uncharted to the present day. Uh, probably the most uh, direct example I can think of is uh, the uh, establishing of a, of a navigable route through the, through the Alexander Strait. So that, that's quite significant uh, when it comes to uh, search and rescue. Do you think that we can find these ships? Uh, we certainly hope so. Uh, we are fairly confident they will be found uh, eventually, and we hope that uh, uh, Parks Canada is, is there when it happens. Uh, the search for Erebus and Terror is logistically very, very complex. Uh, and uh, I think with the, the, the partnerships that we uh, continue to build upon, uh, with the technologies that uh, we're uh, bringing to the table, uh, we're systematically able to cover more ground uh, every year. So we're, we're quite, uh, uh, quite excited at uh, how things are uh, unfolding for this year. Uh, and we uh, continue to enjoy the support, I think, uh, of, uh, of Canadians across the country and uh, we're very pleased to, uh, to share this experience with them. Well, our team is ready to go here, and we'll make sure to keep everyone updated on our Twitter feed, on our Facebook page, and on our website. Thank you so much for joining us here at Mission Control, and stay tuned.